Hey everybody, so we're going to be talking about the hypotenuse leg theorem. This is the last of our postulates and theorems that we can prove right triangles to be congruent. And this one is the one where you can prove side-side angle shh, as congruent. And that's only because we're working with the right triangles. So remember, it's the hypotenuse and the leg of one right triangle. It has to be a right triangle. All right, it's congruent to another right triangle. And it's the hypotenuse and the leg. You'll want to remember that the hypotenuse is the longest side of a right triangle. And it's across from your 90 degree angle. See? All right. Um, so if we're doing this, and I'm going to start with A. I'm going to start with my right angle because it's always right. Haha. <laughs> And then I'm just going in alphabetical order on triangle ABC. Then I'm going to circle my corresponding angle of A, which is angle X. The side and angle that corresponds with B on this new triangle is Y. And then you can draw your circle. This helps us figure out corresponding statements. So we know A corresponds with X, B with Y, and C with Z. So here are the following reasons that you must have in order to use the, or in apply the hypotenuse leg theorem. If triangle ABC and triangle XYZ are right triangles, super important, all right? And your hypotenuse right here, these two are congruent plus the corresponding leg. So remember that leg has to be corresponding. And if you wanna put this note in your notes, I would highly recommend you do so. Pretty much AB and XZ could not be the matching set in this because they are not corresponding. Now, because you have all three of these reasons met, then you can say that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ. So, pretty much, you need these three requirements before you can use HL, hypotenuse leg. Both triangles must be right triangles. Each of the triangles hypotenuse must be congruent. And then one of the corresponding legs, one pair of them, of the corresponding legs must be congruent. So right triangle, hypotenuse congruent, corresponding congruent legs. So I've even got this checklist that I keep at the top if I'm applying hypotenuse leg. If you want to put this on your paper as you're going through, that's totally fine. I'm going to be going through that checklist verbally. First, I have to check if, oof, well, this one, I need to figure out what triangles I'm working with. Since I'm going to write the congruent statement, I'm going to start with F and then go to D. And then I can split it off and make both of my triangles. So I would have triangle FDE right here and FDG. Notice how they correspond with each other. All right. Now we know that angle GFD is a right angle. And because it's supplementary, we know that angle EFD will also be a right angle. Now we have both right triangles. All right. We have corresponding congruent legs. So one has this. And they also have congruent hypotenuse. So because it meets all three requirements, we can yes say these are congruent. And our congruency statement would this be, notice I went in a different order this time, but as long as my corresponding points are actually corresponding, then your statement will work. 
FDE is congruent to FDG would work. FED is congruent to FGD. They work too. All right, let's do number two. Um, oh, now we're looking and we're like, we can't prove that angle UWV is a right angle, but you can because these two are vertical. So in fact, that is a right angle. So now I do have two right triangles. Do I have congruent hypotenuse? XY is my hypotenuse here. And UV is my hypotenuse here. Lastly, corresponding congruent legs. If you're struggling with this, remember you can always draw your circle. Um, I'm going to draw a circle on my W and then go from there. And now let's do the next triangle. So what would correspond with W, V is WY. And then we continue our circle. And why, yes, in fact, this does work. UW and XW are corresponding legs. So, yay, that means these two triangles are congruent. And you can write your congruency statement. You can also write triangle WVU is congruent to triangle WYX as long as these are corresponding. All right. Whoop. All right. So I'm going to give you these two and go through your checklist, right? You'll see that for angle three, even if we draw in this right angle right here, because it's a vertical angle, we still only have two angles, two angles that are congruent. Well, we can even apply the third angles theorem. That means these three angles are congruent. But remember, this is one of those imposters. It's not going to be congruent because it's an angle, angle, angle. It's a, ah, because that's how you feel because you cannot prove it, prove it congruent. All right, let's do this next one. Ooh, okay, so this is something different. Notice right here, your hypotenuse, they're the same line. It's that reflexive property right there. And I'm going from my right angle down, right angle, corresponding, down. Corresponding legs are also congruent. Therefore, triangle MNQ is congruent to triangle PNQ. Again, you can go to MQN is congruent to PQN as long as you have corresponding sides. All right, next one, you need to tell me whether there is enough information given to prove these triangles congruent by hypotenuse leg. Remember, the first thing you need to prove is that these two are right triangles. Okay. So I've got a right triangle. I've got two right triangles because of that supplementary angle. Congruent hypotenuse. Well, no, they do have corresponding congruent legs. But this one's trying to do a side angle side, and this one's trying to do an SSA, but it's a hypotenuse leg, since it's right, and it's always right. So because we don't have congruent hypotenuse, we can say that it's, there's not enough information. It's because you're missing that hypotenuse. All right, number six. So we've got our checklist. Notice these two are congruent. And they're a little backwards for this, so I'm going to go ahead and circle. I'm going to go with A this time. Right angle. Down my reflexive. Back again. Over here. To my right angle. Down my reflexive. Or well, up in this case. So these are both right angles. They both are right triangles, I'm sorry, because angles C, B, A, and B, C, D are right. All right, are they congruent hypotenuse? We'll have A, C is congruent to D, B. And your corresponding congruent leg, that's your reflexive property, but in this case, 
It's actually gonna be your symmetric because your triangles are like this. And because it's swapping, even though it's the same line, this is where that symmetric comes in now. Because now you can flip that triangle and it still be that same side length. This is again symmetric. So yes, this is congruent. I would highly recommend you write these three statements so that you know why we can prove this one by hypotenuse leg. All right, next you need to decide whether enough information is given, right? Same thing, so same checklist. Now, the first thing I would say for doing something like this, separate your triangles to make sure your brain doesn't shut down in a triangle like this. And my, they're not going to be perfect. They're never going to be drawn to scale. But at least you have something to work off of. All right. So BA has two congruency marks and AC has one. This one is triangle F, E, D. ED has two. And FD has one. Well, now you can see that, hey, we do have a side-side angle, a.k.a. a hypotenuse leg situation happening because we've got our right triangles, angles F, E, D, and angles C, B, A. You, notice I'm using my corresponding parts to write these, are 90 degrees. Corresponding hypotenuse, we've got side length A, C is congruent with D, F. And then lastly, we've got ED, or I'm sorry, I'll start with the first triangle. We've got BA is congruent to ED. Oop. All right, so because we have all three of these statements meeting, we can say, yes, these two triangles, ABC and DEF, are congruent. Now we're going to solve it. I know, you were really hoping that you got to prove it, but some of you are cheering in the background. That's okay. Now, for what values of X and Y are the triangles congruent by HL? Oh, goodness. So, you get to do algebra. You thought you got away from it. So, HL means that these two have to be congruent, and these two have to be congruent. So, I've got my congruency marks on that bottom. And notice I'm color coding for our algebra. It's going to help us see it in a little bit. All right. Let's set up our equations. They're going to be equal to each other. Same thing for your hypotenuse. Now, we can't do too much with this blue one because we've got too much going on. But if you notice in that first one, if I subtract x from both sides, it's just going to be y equals 7. Now that I have y equals 7, I can take that 7, and you remember that blue equation from the hypotenuse? You can plug that 7 in. 7 plus 5, 12. 2 times 7, 14. Solve for x. You get negative 2 equals negative x. Well, we're looking for a positive x. And if a negative, two is, if a negative x is negative 2, then a positive x is a positive 2. Make sure you draw a box around both of your answers because that's what the question was asking you for. What values of x and y are these going to be congruent by hypotenuse leg? All right, so same thing. And this one's a little bit topsy-turvy, but you can still make it happen. So notice these are your two corresponding congruent legs. Then we've got our corresponding congruent hypotenuse, and technically it won't, you won't need to say it's corresponding. Set up both of your equations. And you're like, um, I don't know what to do. Well, guess what? You're essentially going to be doing, excuse me, um, substitution. This one right here, it says what x is equal to. Therefore, you can take that 2y and plug it in wherever there is an x 
in that first equation. You thought you were tired of systems of equations. It's back for you. So now you're going to solve for y. Subtract the y from both sides. You get y minus 4 equals 3. Add the 4, you get y equals 7. And you think you're done, but x is still not a value yet. You're going to have to take the 7 and plug it into that original blue equation. So it becomes x equals 2 times 7, which is going to be that x is 14. And that's all I got for you. If you need help with systems of equations, go check out my algebra videos. It's there.